does. Okay, so I'm talking here about types. And Java types tell us the legal values associated with quantities like variables. They also tell us the legal values associated with return values, parameters, um, etc. Why types? Well, just like specifying dimensions for an object prevents us from doing silly things, like adding like adding dollars to persons, or adding persons per per year to persons, or something like that. Um, you could do the same thing with types. You could try to do something if, if you didn't have types around. You could do something. You could try to in your program without without being warned about it. You could do something like try to add a string to a double or something. And types don't guarantee we have no errors like that, but they help greatly reduce the chance that we have errors of these silly sorts. Okay, um, we can discover many obvious errors when we do a so-called build when we're trying to make the program ready to run. Okay, um, so there's a thing called type coercion or casting, which is used to go from one type to another. So suppose we have a double precision value, we want to convert it to an integer. We have an integer, we wish to convert it to a string. Um, we have an active object we know is a person, we want to treat it as a person. Then we, we can cast it or co coerce it to that. And this is how we, we cast it, like this. So we have a value and we turn it, and we turn it into a value of the target type by putting this parentheses in front of it. So for example, if we have age, we want to print it out, we could turn it into a string like that. Now some of these occur automatically, but some don't. Um, most, for the most part, they don't. Or suppose, Suppose I know item is a person. I want to say treat as a female, so I can because female is a type of person. It will turn out, and I want to ask is are they pregnant? Or I want to um, uh, I want to take age as an integer and add one to it. Um, okay, um, right. Um, okay, again, you folks are are seeing stuff that's a little bit advanced here, but it will be helpful for understanding. Sometimes we have what's called parameterized types, and they look like this, and they will appear in any logic. So we have array list of person. We have set of person, list of deer. In this case, what, what this is is kind of a, um, often it's for collections, although not always, but often it's collections. Um, and, and we might want to say, like, we have a set of double precision values or a set of deer or a list of deer, array list of deer. Mm -hmm. So here's an array list, for example, of a double, of a double, of a double precision numbers, or a set of persons, or a list of deer. This might be the set of persons that have gotten vaccinated in the last year, and you just want to accumulate them. Here, this might be a list of deer that have um, have died within the past year, and you want to you want to list them out. So here, this allows us to access one of the members of this and know that it's a deer, or access a member here and know that it's a person. So we could have a set, a person, a set, a deer, and we know that the things in it are a deer or a person. Okay. Were those mm -hmm. triangular brackets part of the placeholder, or is that the actual language? That's the actual language, sorry. So, so, uh, so in Java, um, as well as in other C -like languages, um, we can use this kind of syntax to mean um, it's a parameterized type. In other words, you can think of this as like array list, just like move to the need to do its job. It needs an X and a Y location to which to move. Array list to be complete, a complete specification, we need to know it's an array list of what? It's an array list of cars? It's an array list of deer? In other words, this thing we can iterate down. Does it give a deer? Does it give me cars? Does it give me people? Um, and so this is actually part of the Java language. It says like this is an array list of these things. This is a set of these things. Okay. Um, so these are called parameterized types or generics is, is the term used to specific to Java. They're called templates in C++. Um, template types. Um, and um, th there's a, a theory behind them. Um, as I say, some people spend their their work their like doing type issues. Um, Okay, um, so for example, in, 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 in Java, those things we saw this morning on, on, on this um, uh, process entry modeling, those use types resource pool, for example, of doctor, or resource pool of, of nurse, or resource pool of room, procedure room, or resource pool of scope. That, that, that's how this is denoted. If you actually were to go into the model, um, and I don't know that I, I still have it open, here it is. Look at that. Um, okay, so if, if I go here 
and I go down to this, and I go to doctor. Um, what what is this? This is a network resource pool. Um, okay, sorry. So so I misspoke. Doctor is a network resource pool, something that extends resource unit. So this is actually just treated as kind of a a set of resource units, but it's a network resource pool of these things. Okay. Um, so that's how doctors are defined. Um, uh, okay. So or an array list of persons or a pair of a string and double. That there, there's no, there's no pre-existing pair class. Of course, you have to do it yourself. Okay, here's another thing. Experiment takes main class. So, so folks, when you go to declare an experiment, um, look at this. Here's an experiment, right? Um, and you know this, this says what, what class is an experiment of? If I go and I look at this, watch this. Um, oh, I can't. It doesn't allow me to do that. Let's, let's go view the code. Um, oh man. Um, you folks are getting advanced stuff here. Um, look at that. Experiment simulation, main phase three. What is this main phase three? What do you think that's set by? It's set by, if I change this to main phase one, watch this. And now I do model build. Okay, now here we are, simulation.java. Let's go back down. What do you think it will say now? Main phase one, yeah. So in other words, this is an experiment sort of that whose associated main class is that, that kind of tells it about that resource pool or resource unit, network resource pool, resource unit, active object, um, array list of, of some active object, etc. So your, um, ladies and gentlemen, your, um, uh, here, if we go to main and we look at the uh, population here, and, um, and we were to go look uh, at population, um, this is a, if I'm not mistaken, this is a, I'm just going to control J to go here. Let's go up to the top. Um, uh, oh, I should have gone, sorry, sorry. Um, this would, I should have gone, gone here. Okay, um, here we go. So um, let's go see where this is defined. This is people dot, where is people defined? Um, where is people here? Let, let's go search for people, people. Um, people here we go this is an array active object array list of persons so, so so that's what's in it persons okay and and it's this thing called active object array list which has some special semantics um okay so i i should have done this um okay um okay enums this is this is one of the most uh useful so just be aware that when you see those angle brackets they actually mean it's like a, a parameter of type you're telling you're telling the container often what it is that it contains, what sort of thing. And it turns out that that's useful. Java only had those recently, fairly recently. And before that, uh, you could do it. It was just that it involved a lot of like coercion of, of casting. It was less safe. OK, um, you know, why, why? Well, often we desire in our models to encode categorical information. We can encode that information with, with integers, male equals zero, female equals one. We made use of this, right? Um, Province, like Newfoundland, Labrador, zero, New Brunswick, one, PEI, two, Q, uh, Quebec, three. We could do that, right? To name each of those. Um, we could say denote sex with an int, province with an int. The problem is that that's fragile. Why? We could make a, a zero value and stake it as encoding males or Newfoundland, Labrador. Um, we could accidentally reverse the order of parameters given to a method. You know, sex instead of giving sex and then and then uh, province, we give province and sex, and it doesn't detect it. Or we assign one value to another. We do something silly and assign, you know, something that says male to assign it to to be the province or something like that. Sex equals province. That would be a bad thing. Um, okay, so enumerations help avoid this. They help us give easily understood names to things. And the second reason is we forget. Does zero mean men or women? It's very easy to forget. Or someone looks at your code and they see a three and they don't know if it's Quebec or they don't know if it's, you know, um, if it's some ethnicity or they don't know if it's, you know, some other, um, some other, uh, some other code. Yeah. It's it's uh, not not so good, and uh, it may be better than what you've seen, but it's not so good. I'll tell you why it's not so good. Okay, um, because you forget to cap.
capitalize them consistently and then it thinks they're different. This is a way to set them up as strings, but it will force you to do it consistently. Okay? It will tell you. It will know it can only be one of these choices and you have to spell it the same way. Okay? Um, so this is much, gives much of I, I like strings better than just numbers, but it's fragile. And this is less fragile. Okay. Um, strings better than numbers, this better than strings. Um, okay, so so enumerations, um, uh, okay, it, don't worry about that. That's um, some comments I gave to my fourth year undergraduates. Um, uh, so enums let us give names to information, refer to the names in our code, convert the names where po where where desired into values, compare names, turn them into strings, so quite quite descriptive strings, define operations on names, etc. So this is what we can do. We can say sex, male, female. And then if it expects a sex, it forces you to enter one of these. And if you say female with a lowercase, it will it will it will say, I don't know which one that is, and it'll force you to do it as a capital F female. Whereas if, if it if you were depending on this to encode as strings, you would have to check, okay, is this one of the same strings as I'm expecting, et cetera. You might make the mistake of, of misspelling. Here's province, you know, you could name one of that, or you could spell it out, just no spaces, okay? Um, uh, and then you could use these things. You say sex, sex. So this refers to it's one of these two. Province, it's one of these two. But even more powerful than that, you can have actually things associated. These are actually classes, and you can have things that turn these into, you know, give the full names of this province. And so you can actually ask for its full name, and then it will give it to you. Or you can ask for its centroid, and it will give it to you. You can ask for its population, and it will give it to you, which is, is kind of nifty. The point is, this is also preventive. You can't pass one of these as one of these. You say, no, that's not a legal sex. Only these two are legal sexes. Can't misspell it. It's going to keep you honest, OK? So where do you put these things? Um, yeah. Sure. You want to go back? Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's so so this so it's saying essentially there's a custom type called this that has two possible values. One value is written capital M A L E, and one value is written this. So if it sees one of these, it knows this is denoting a set. You mean like these sort of things? Yeah. yeah. So you can't use it to just have uh, let's do thousand values. So one, two, three, oh. um, twelve, thirteen, and then one. That's a good question. Um, no, but you could get it to do that. So each of these could have a value associated with it, and it could convert it to one of these. So well, okay. Mm. Um, numbers in these, but but they can't, I don't think they can just consist of number. I, I, it's an intriguing idea. I see totally where you're getting at here. I see that, you know, you may only want to have um, a certain number of shoe sizes or, you know, I don't know, um, sizes for, um, as you say, box springs or I, I, I don't know what, um, you know, r railroad widths or something like that. Um, uh, and uh, and I could see why you might want to restrict that and then only allow values from that group. Um, I don't I don't think it supports that. And I think one of the reasons is because if it saw a two in your if you saw a two in your in your model somewhere, it wouldn't know like is this a two as in a shoe size or a two as in a railroad width or a two as in a whatever. What you could have is sort of um, you know, like um, Shoe size two, uh, shoe size three, shoe size four and a half, or whatever the shoe sizes are. Um, and you can't multiply the divides. You actually, you can define yeah. operators on okay, them. So yeah, yeah. So you could, 
you could define operators that involve these, uh, that, that combine these in different ways. Like, I don't know, midway operator between these would return the province halfway, or return is, is adjacent, and you could actually have it do that. So it's even more than just the named set of values. But you're making me really think. I, I, I think that's an interesting question. I don't think languages support that. But how do you add these uh, these uh, enums to your, to your model? Well, you go up here, um, you go to like person, and then there's this thing that says additional class code under advanced. You could just insert these. So this is public enum sex, and this would be male and female. Now, if you need to refer to, this isn't person because this is sex with respect to person. There could be a deer sex, which is a different ball of wax. And just because you're male person doesn't mean, um, you may think you're a real buck, but that doesn't mean you're a deer. The same, uh, <laughs> a deer, a deer buck, or uh, a deer, um, you know, a deer male. Um, and um, uh, well, we could we could make other jokes, but uh, but you know, this is sex with respect to person. So it would be person dot sex. There's ethnicity, and here you can be a member of of certain ethnicities. And again. If it's expecting an ethnicity, you have to enter something that's legitimate for one of these. It can be a variable that's one of them, you know, that itself is of the ethnicity or, or some some value. Um, and, and you can actually have a thing that's like random sex, random ethnicity, or pick out with a certain probability of different ethnicities. You can use a multinomial distribution or whatever. But the point is, um, this will define it, and then we can use these things. So, oh, um, okay, that's a good question. Um, mumble. Um, so, uh, public, um, another term that we use. Uh, okay, so this means that anybody who's outside the model can still know about this. No, who's outside this class can still know about this. So if Maine wanted to refer to the sex as like person dot um, person dot male um, or person dot female. Um, I think that's the syntax would be used. Um, it could do so. Um, it would know about these two things as they relate to sex, um, and that might be useful if you want to pass them as parameters. For example. But I think. So wouldn't it be person dot sex in parentheses female? Um, I actually. So this is a good question. Um, it wouldn't be that, but it, it might be person.sex.mail. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. This is inside it. So, so, so this is, th so this, this sex, it has type, no, so it, yes, it has initial value, um, sex.female, okay? Um, that's its default value. The ethnicity uh, is by default ethnicity.mate, or yes, its default value, and, um, why do we have to specify, um, well, yeah, okay, so that's, uh, that's right. And then we could generate a random one, random ethnicity, and here it just goes through, um, it picks an integer from zero to the number of, uh, so, so, so that, so yeah. So we the yeah. previous slide, and you had like the. This guy? Yeah. Uh, this so guy? Yeah. That yeah. You're saying, do we need this thing, like ethnicity? Well, yeah, the way that's set up, this is like, it's one of the... Let's see. Let's go see. I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I don't, I'm not playing this thing. No, no, it's, it's, uh, let, let's, let's just uh, check this out. The question is, does it need that qualification, like uh, ethnicity dot whatever? Let's, let's go check it out. So, um, uh, here, let's suppose we, we said this is, um, its default value is Métis, okay? Um, part of the thing to know is where is this default value uh, uh, default value uh, used? It's actually used in Maine. Um, yeah, see, exactly, exactly. Um, um, so, so it actually does need this um, this information here. Um, so, uh, it actually does does require that now. Yeah. This is this is basically saying the default value of ethnicity is the Métis category 
associated with the ethnicity of the military. But it's just weird because you would think that everyone would be kind of different in the model. Why'd you set up like all those categories and then set everyone to Oh, oh it's not. This is just the default flight if you don't specify it. Remember, this is this is what's used up in in Maine. The default value there is used in Maine if you don't specify it. So so let's go up to Maine. Up Maine, and if we go down to population here, th that's what's used. Um, that would be used to fill this in if if nothing were specified. No, it's just that um, I mean, we could leave out that default value. It's just that if, if we don't. Yeah. <laughs> it just it, seems like it had to be there, and uh, but if it doesn't have but to be there. No, no, it doesn't have to be there. Um, but it's like you're a you you person that random age, you have parentheses, and or if see? you're finding an integer, it's see, not like inch dot two. See, see, there it is. See, see there it, it appeared here. So, so I didn't specify it. Uh, if, if I got rid of this, boom. Um, and and we did build, it fills in the default value. Wouldn't that be, isn't that almost, yeah, isn't that more dangerous in the sense that if you, if you're, if it's not there, it's not doing it randomly, you might run your model and then not even realize it's generating everybody the same ethnicity. Why would you want that default? I think that's a legitimate critique. I yeah. think, I think you're correct that um, it would probably be safer if we were to leave that yeah, out. Uh, you'd rather it, it alert you to that error sooner. So you're saying somewhere in your yeah. model you, you put it, the distribution of ethnicity like in a separate um, Correct. Okay. Well, well I, I did it exactly where we were just a second ago. So I, I think that's a, a very legitimate critique. And same thing for sex, right? If, if you don't specify it, you'd want it to complain, not to simply impose, impose a particular one. And so up in population, um, here, this is where I, I sort of um, compute the ethnicity from some draw from some distribution. And if I left that out, um, and I I built it, well, okay, it still doesn't warn me. It's still just blank here right now, um, and and so it's probably just imposing something. I don't know what it is. Um, um, it's actually not null though. I think it's actually using. But but actually, there is a way with with um, enums to make it so the default value is illegal. In which case, it would. No, no, no it's fine now. Well, that, okay, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah let's, let's give it a shot. Um, normally, Java doesn't warn you if you're using something that's um, un uh, uninitialized. But um, let's give it a shot. No, but somewhere in your logic, you're probably going to say if ethnicity equals this. this do this and, and otherwise fall through, uh, otherwise throw an error. Yeah, like it won't yeah. be able to assign the ethnicity to the children to the right. Okay. <laughs> 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 it's a rule everybody's the same, you bet. Um, well, let's, let's go look what are people. Maybe you're always defining it. What, what, what are, it, so there's, n see, there's no ethnicity. Their there sex is male, sex is female, sex is male, but it gives no. Where where is it? Down there. Well, is it your entire population? Is, is, uh, Maybe that's because that's the first one. Oh no no. Huh. Um. Uh. Um. Ah. Uh, uh, okay, I have to go look. Maybe somewhere. Uh, you know, uh, I don't. I, I, okay, you got me. Um, <laughs> uh, I I don't know. Um, Do you think maybe you redid it? Maybe. Uh, I I. Maybe like you said. Yeah, may, maybe maybe I I got it somewhere else. Um, but uh, that's that's the most interesting thing. Um, but but let's let's just go look here for a minute. I mean, if we were to drill down. One of the advantages of using the enums is you can see this, you know, it's very explicitly labeled, right? Um, and it's labeled in a way that allows you to sort of um, recognize. Uh, incidentally, if, if you look here, you know, for the children, um, 
Uh, you can see kind of, okay, all these children are, are now dead, unfortunately. Um, um, but um, there's, uh, it only keeps track of, uh, okay, there, there's a child that's still alive, um, this, this one here. Um, but, uh, and then you could call report, um, yeah, um, re report the children through, sort of print out the children. In any case, um, uh, so, so this is a way to sort of, you, to give uh, clear, unambiguous names to, um, to these, um, to these things. Okay, so that, um, that's enums. Enums are a lot more flexibility, uh, like a lot more flexible than I'm letting on. Um, but um, they're, um, they're readily available, but you will have to insert them. Oh, you bet, you bet. So I could look for Métis, for example, throughout my code, right? Um, and I could look, um, oh, I just did Control F. Um, uh, yeah, I can I can uh, replace, um, so there's, uh, uh, let's see, search replace, yeah. Um, so um, uh, so if I, if I did Métis, I could do replace by, and you know, find, find something else, but um, this is this is where it's at. Um, so um, there's it initialized summary statistics. Oh, okay. Um, um, Métis predicate. Yeah. Okay. So so it creates these are some summary statistics that it's going to calculate. And this is the other another place where it's used um, uh, here. Um, so those are the two places where it's explicit use right now. Sort of a declaration of it, and then it's used in this in this. Uh, Body and defining some statistics, but um, that's where it's used. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have to meet with some groups right now. Any final questions while I'm packing up? What time do you start up in? Start up in. Um, I think it's in uh, half an hour.